This episode of Super Boothers is brought to you by LA Photo Party, winner of 2016 and 2017's Best Photo Booth Design Award by the Photo Booth Network. LA Photo Party is one of the industry's top sources for photo booths like the brand new Venture, as well as software like Photo Booth Upload and Photo Party Upload. Visit their website at lafotoparty.com. Hello and welcome to Super Boothers. My name is Ryan. And I'm Ismail. And today is a special day. It's a very special day. I'm so excited. Today is August 23rd to most of you. However, August 23rd is my birthday. A day that will live in infamy. It is the same birthday as Gene Kelly from Singing in the Rain and American Paris. I actually think I share a birthday with Shelley Long. She was on the like new Brady Bunch movie. Yeah, I wonder if other people know. Who shares their birthday? I got a couple people on my birthday. Who's on your birthday? I just don't know. Uh, Michael Jackson and Warren Buffett. Very, very... Seriously? People that I respect and admire. Well, that explains why you're addicted to propofol. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love a good nap. So anyways, so today is my birthday. I'm so excited. Tomorrow is Super Boothers A Night in Gotham. Oh, yes. And what a wonderful birthday gift to Ryan that he gets to hang out with people that listen to the show. I'm so excited. We're in New York today. We're filming more episodes tomorrow. It's I, I, I'm absolutely over the moon. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. You're going to be seeing a lot of – we're going to be doing a Facebook Live tomorrow. Um, we're also going to be showing some video content as well, um, and we're going to put that on YouTube and then hopefully get um, a couple of good episodes in for you all guys. Yeah, let us know if you like the content that we're putting out, what you like better, if you like the Facebook Lives better, if you like certain podcasts better. Uh, make sure you let us know. Also, please take a moment out of your day if you could rate this podcast on Apple Podcasts and iTunes. It really helps us out. We really love five star reviews, um, and if you could leave us a little a little note on there, we'd appreciate it. Yeah, I think people don't realize how much effort we have to put into making this show happen. So if you've gotten any value out of it, uh, we'd really appreciate you just giving an honest review on iTunes. Um, it actually matters a lot and helps us out a lot so thank i mean you. if you have to stretch it a bit and just say that we're the most good looking people that you've ever seen then by all means i wouldn't mind i would not mind so kids it's back to school week um i know that if any of y'all have kids they either started school or just about to start school it's it's that time of the year for bouquets of freshly sharpened pencils and notebooks and office supplies and i love office supplies <laughs> i have my gold stapler here that's a little weird I love gold accessories. Isn't that isn't the stapler from Office Space? No, it is not the stapler. It actually is a swing line, though. Um, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. Today we're here to talk about following up. Um, it is. Yes. I I have been going through. I guess my so in my booking system, I have emails that automatically go out right after. Um, I guess I put it in the system and I had it set previously to where it was like a newsletter and it wasn't really that effective. Um, people really kind of got pissed off with me that I was sending them like stupid stuff. Well, there's a, there's a lesson in that. Um, it is. Uh, I was sending – well, I was sending out one that was like – it was more like inspirational ideas. So one of the things that I really loved is at Kim and Kanye's wedding, they did a black and white photo booth with just a white background and then the photos were all black and white, really, really, really crisp. It was just such a cute look. I put that on there as like, hey, inspiration, like we can like set this as like black and white or whatever. Yeah, no one gave a crap. I think this is a timely discussion for me because I'm also going through uh, the process soon of evaluating all my email follow-ups. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing what Ryan has to say and what I can take away from this. I do know that they're very important. Um, they're very effective for me. Uh, I think a lot of people don't do follow-ups, but they actually make a big impact. I have two stats in front of me. Um, one is that 44% of people give up after one follow-up. Uh, but yeah. 80% of sales require, on average, five follow-ups. So... Uh, that clearly states that you should be following up. A lot of people don't go through the effort, but it makes a significant difference. This is a thing is I've been experimenting recently with following up on email in addition to following up on text. Um, I think that I'm booking more people by text message than I think by email. And actually lately by chat. I just installed another little chat widget that is attached to like a ticketing system. And I booked one today and I mean I, I barely threw it up there today. Yeah, that's definitely something as a software developer that I'm paying close attention to. There seems to be a huge trend 
towards not just texting, but chatbots. It's being implemented a lot in a lot of businesses, and it's proven to be very effective. Because if you text someone or if you send someone a Facebook message or some kind of chat, you get a much higher response rate than an email. Because it's personal, and it's like yes. something that's like already... So this is the thing. I was like kind of screwing around the internet lately, and I saw an, a developer where you can pay someone to set up like a chatbot script for you. And then copy that information yep. and put it on your website so that whenever someone is having a conversation to where like let's say like someone says, oh, do you have this date available? You can have the chat bot recognize keywords in whatever they're sending, and then it will send out a message back that says, you know, fill out this form, and then we can tell you if we're available or not. And then, you know, in, end of story versus having you having to type in this information one by one with everyone. So it takes the most common questions and then gives them pre populated answers. I think it's genius. I would, I think it's like so Jetsons for me. Like it's so far into the future. I can't believe it's happening like right now. Yeah, there's a lot of different ways that you can do this. One thing that I'm paying close attention to, and we can touch on this on another episode, is actually integrating chat bots like that with Facebook. And it gets, a, it's a crazy response rate because people want to get that notification off their Facebook Messenger app, um, as opposed to just doing the chat on your site. Yeah, there's 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 a way, I forgot the company that does this, but... There's a few of them. It's one that I used, it was, there was like a real estate one, but, and I'm having a hard time like figuring out like... I mean, remembering like what the hell it was, but it was so interesting because, you know, I think I was going to do like a workshop or something. Like, let's just say it was like a podcasting workshop, you know, type, 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 Hey, click this button and then we'll send you a PDF. Click the button. He sent me a PDF of like whatever, you know, he was selling. And then it was like nonstop messaging after that. I was like, okay, I just need to turn this the hell off. So you kind of need to be careful as to like not overload people with information, but if they request it, be able to like get them the information that they need quickly. Right. And I, I don't think email is going anywhere anytime. Um, no. But because uh, there's not a lot of marketing in texts and messages, uh, right now it seems to be a trend that's worth paying attention to. I think that you need to be able to communicate with your client in the manner that they want to communicate with your company. So if someone's better by email, I have a ticketing system to where I know that I've got to every single person that ever emailed me. And it's just off of my list because there are times where like, you know, you get up in the morning, oh, I need to, someone, you know, an email came in at six o'clock in the morning. I need to get back with them. You know, 10 o'clock, you know, you start working 11 o'clock 12 o'clock two o'clock three shit i forgot i didn't email them and then with a ticketing system it's just easy in easy out so you know that you're not having they're not having to wait on you right so i think in this conversation we're going to focus on um some takeaways that ryan wanted to communicate about following up ismail doesn't agree with some of them which i kind of like i didn't say i disagreed i just i just don't know hold on. I, let me let me fully. hold on. Let me let me pull the receipts because there was a text message where you said I don't agree with this. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. so, <laughs> so this is I guess our little top ten ways of following up without really being annoying. The first thing that I really have to talk about is removing the word just from your vocabulary. Don't just check in with someone or just touch base. It's the equivalent of saying, hey, are you ready to give me money yet? Like it, it, it's it's like word diarrhea. There is no – there's no good use that can come of it. It adds absolutely no value. I th- just think it, j- the words just and that, and I'm, I say them both. I really have to like pull myself back and be like, okay, no, you don't need to be saying this. Yeah, I think people just, oh, you know, there you go. It's hard not to use just, uh, but it, yeah, it's, it's but like, see, that's the thing. And whenever we're speaking to each other, saying just is fine. Right. But whenever you read the word just, it's like you know, it's not as important. Hi, I need you to give me money. Are you gonna do that? Yeah, like it's just it's there's no value in yeah, it. I've actually read a bunch of studies about. This and even in like the corporate world where people have emails that just check in, check in, and just it just seems like you're operating from a position of weakness. And um, again, hi, I'm just circling back. No, yeah. If you if you listen to any of the shows, I tend to not like to get caught in the minutia of things, and that's why. Uh, not that I disagree with this, I think it's true, but 
I don't know how big of a difference it really makes uh, using the word just. I think the main takeaway is not to operate from a position of weakness and, and say, hey, are you ready yet? Hey, I'm just checking in. I think that's the main takeaway. I think takeaway. it all has to be able to paint a picture between you and the other vendor. So if you have a vendor that says that's very helpful, that doesn't speak of their, you know what, we're not going to call it a photo booth. We're going to call it a photo station or a photo kiosk or whatever. I, whenever I did catering, we were not allowed to say the word ivory. That is just a horrible 80s word. We would always say French vanilla. I mean, it is just in the way that you present it to your client. And I think that if you remove the superfluous language, I just think that, you know, you're just elevating your 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 brand and your presence. Yeah, I mean, words definitely do matter. And I, I've seen countless studies about this. And, and there's actually a book that I read about um, eating called Mindless Eating. And it talked about the psychology of food. And I remember there was a study in there where just changing the name or a few words in the menu significantly affected how many people ordered it. Um, and if you want to check that book out, it's a great book about psychology. I apply a lot of the stuff from there um, in business. Uh, you can head over to audibletrial.com slash superboothers and get it for free. Uh, but yeah, words definitely do matter. Um, that's a, that's a, it's, it's all marketing. It's all in the romance of it. There's a fish called Patagonian toothfish that there's a surplus of. And back in the 80s, some genius person decided to change it to Chilean sea bass. All of a sudden... Yeah, I mean, it's a similar kind of topic where I was just saying where the word, the word can make a huge difference. I just don't want people to think that it's as simple as it's just the word just. I think it's more of the general takeaway um, that you don't want to sound too desperate. Sure. And weak. Going on to number two, which is don't quickly follow up. That's just saying like, hello. There, there's nothing about quickly that creates urgency. Listen, I'm, I'm just going to throw some opposing thoughts out there for people to consider. There, there are other studies that state that people are more likely to take a buying action immediately after an inquiry. So if you, if you think of it from that perspective, it may make sense to follow up quickly, but I see what Ryan is saying where, again, it sounds – it looks desperate. No, no, no. I'm, I'm saying that if there's a dead lead that you haven't spoken to in two and a half weeks, I see what you're hey, saying. just quickly following up, I no, that is going to go nowhere. Right, that makes sense. So the next one is leading the client. You should always be telling the client what they should be doing next. This is before the sales process and then after the sales process. So for example, let's say that you have you know designed a little photo booth layout for them. You're gonna do strips, they have a logo, you send it out to them. Don't say, let me know what you think. You're just opening up a rabbit hole for someone to be like, well, I don't like that it's, you know, 0.2 millimeters to the left. Can we move it 0.3 millimeters to the right? I mean, you're just, don't do that. Whenever you send stuff like that, just say, please approve. That way you're just leading your client, just saying, listen, I love this. It's great. Perfect. Moving on. Don't give them the opportunity, you know, to make like large changes or even small changes if it's, you know, a little bit unnecessary. People are more likely to just do whatever you tell them to do. Right, Ismail? <laughs> Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> I was like, I said, I want to talk about following up today. What do you want to talk about? He's like, oh, I think we should talk about pricing. I was like, great, following up it is. <laughs> it's not easy working with Ryan. Trust me on that. <laughs> you love it. But I, I, I do agree that leading the client, I mean, as a business owner, it's up to you to guide the discussion um, towards the ultimate goal that you wanted to get to. Uh, I, I don't think that people should take away from this that you should lead them into like a pushy sales process. No. I just think, yeah, you don't want to be pushy and aggressive, but you want to lead them towards the action you want them to take, or at least make it easy for them to say yes. And that's and that's the thing. So it come, I don't know how many people do um, in-person appointments. I generally don't. However, when I did, instead of saying, you know what, look it all over, let me know what you think. Don't say that. Just say, and you know, let's say that we're going to end up meeting this client. Say, how about we talk next week? Which is better for you, Tuesday at 10 a.m. or Wednesday at 3 p.m.? You're just saying, you know, which one works best for you? Um, this is a big, big sales thing with anyone that does, um, you know, online sales of any form. So if you want to schedule a time to talk, the client has said that they want to talk to you, give them the opportunity and say, hey, which one works best for you? There's also a step further that you could take. There's something called acuity scheduling. It is um, an online little app where you can have your client set an appointment. You can put parameters on there so they won't, you know, book it, you know, within six hours. You know, you can have it booked, you know, let's say 48 hours. So you're giving your client the opportunity to pick a time that works best for them. Yeah, and as you get more experience, 
uh, in sales, you start to find out what gaps to close and not leave openings for. For something as simple as like photo strip designs, I found in the beginning I would say, hey, we do custom designs for your event. Um, let us know what you want us to do. Can of worms. Total can of worms. Now, as, you get, as we got more experience, we started to really narrow that discussion down where what's your event? Do you have a theme? Do you have anything you want written on the strip? And then we would just create a design and they'd be happy with it. It's just a much more efficient way of doing it. Uh, the takeaway here is to lead the discussion. The client does not know uh, all the things that you know. So it's up to you to guide that conversation. So the next thing is is asking the question, is it the right time? Um, whenever you get an email from someone, you know, you haven't heard from them in a while. This is almost goes with like, so every industry has like the still interested email. This kind of takes it a step further. Is this the right time? You have a client, they've expressed interest, you haven't heard from them. Is this the right time for you? It takes the pressure off of you and takes the pressure off of them. That way they can say, you know what? No, we decided in another direction, which that's that's the thing is you have to also see what the response is. So is this the right time commands really a response from them because you're personalizing it a little bit. So if they say, yes, this is the right time, great, you have your answer. If they say, no, we're holding off till next month, that seems like a no, but the buying signal is really a yes. So it's no for right now, yes in ne- next month maybe. So it's also – I like the soft touch here. Like as opposed to saying, hey, are you ready to book? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Think this is, is it the right time is a much more softer approach and you still get the answer that you're looking for. And I've had plenty of people that say, you know, we postponed our event because of X, Y, Z reason. And then you know to follow up in a month or two or whenever their event's going to be. Or even then you're just being empathetic a little bit and understanding where they're coming from. So they can understand, you know what, it, I really hate doing this, but there are, the only times where I really do it is if someone wants to book, you know, within three weeks and I need to put the heat on them a little bit, I'll say – Are you interested in moving forward? We have another client that's interested. That's the time where, you know what, I'll really like put them under the gun just because it's, I need to know because it's so quick. If it's something further out, you can't say, well, hey, we have someone, you know, looking to book and it's, you know, a year and a half from now. No one's going to believe that. Just say, is this the right time for you to move forward? You know, we're offering this, we're offering that, you know, whatever works for them. Yeah, the softer approach I found definitely works better, except in those uh, extenuating circumstances like Ryan said where you're under a time crunch. So number five for those that are counting, provide value. Give them options that generally aren't available from other vendors. So this is where I was kind of going with my like little like newslettery sort of email is I was like, hey look, Kim and Kanye did this. First of all, I don't think anyone gives a shit about Kim and Kanye anymore. <laughs> um, but other than that, I would offer them say listen we can do animated gifts they can do overlays now we can do a green screen we can change up your theme a little bit you know we can do this sort of background we can do a projector you know texting is included all of that is information that they need to know that they may not have known prior to today someone just asked if they get all the photos after the fact i guess they had a vendor that they previously used where I guess they went to like Zenfolio or something like that where they had to buy the photos individually. I told her, no, we include a microsite. You'll get a text message at the end of the evening and it's all included. That changed everything for her. And I realized that there's a little gap in my website where she didn't know that. Um, so it's always good to provide value whenever you're communicating with your I client. I very, very strongly agree with this point, probably most out of all 10 that we're going to go through. I think as the business owner, as the expert, you know, most of the time when you're dealing with clients, they're asking you questions because they don't know, right? Most people don't know. Some people yeah. some people may know exactly what they want, but most of the time you have to educate your client. And this reminds me of probably the, I think it's the best business book I ever read, definitely the best sales book I've ever read. And I know Brian Miller, who's a guest on our previous show, actually has this as one of his top five books. It's The Ultimate Sales Machine by Chet Holmes. I think I've told people, like, if you read any book on business, read this book and you'll become very wealthy. And it's all about selling through education. Positioning yourself as the expert and teaching your clients and how that affects your sales. Uh, I definitely recommend reading that book. I can't agree more strongly with this. And again, if you want to get it for free, audibletrial.com slash superboothers, and we'll have the link in the show notes. But I strongly agree with providing value. I think that's the best way to grow a reputable brand and get more sales. Number six, continually ask questions to get them to talk. I always, always, always end an email with the question. It commands a response back. 
one of the things I like is, you know, here's all the sales information. You know, where's your venue? They answer that question. Oh, great. You know, we were there last week. La, la, la. Who gives a crap? What colors are you working with at the end of that email? Oh, well, our colors are this. You're investing in your client and building the relationship without them knowing. And it doesn't cost anything to do this. You're just showing just a little bit of interest. And trust me, after doing this for a while, it, it it's like pulling teeth to get me to seem interested. But I've just kind of just become – it's second nature to me. It's just, oh, you know, what colors are you using? Oh, do you have a theme? One of my clients yesterday, oh, we're doing a Wizard of Oz theme. Great. What if we do a yellow brick road? We can do, you know, a little Emerald City. Who gives a crap? You're, this, is, this is where you're <laughs> – <laughs> this is where you're getting the opportunity to shine and really give them more value than what they were getting somewhere else. So if you are getting the information, hey, this is a Wizard of Oz theme, the other vendor that didn't ask that question isn't having that conversation with your client and you're having the conversation yep. with them. So yeah, it yep. opens up for you to be creative if those of you who choose to be creative. I mean, if not, then, you know, here's your props, you know, have some fun. Press the button, it'll take a picture. I would just throw a word of caution in here. When Ryan says continually ask questions, he does not mean write an email with a bullet of 10 questions. No one's going to no. to that. But just a conversational question at the end of at the end of your email. You know what? You follow it up with someone and just say, is there any props or any particular theme that we can include with this? Yeah, you, you want to make it really easy for them to reply and know what they should reply to. Um, and definitely... Asking one question per email continues the conversation. And like Ryan said, you're investing in their relationship. It's actually proven that they're investing too. This is twofold, yeah. They, by answering one question and another question and another question, they're actually investing in you and picking you as a vendor. So they're more likely to go with you. Because this is the thing. Once they've had the conversation with you, you're, they're already in too deep. They're not going to have this conversation with someone else if they wasted a couple days on you. Yeah, it's actually something that's really fascinating. It's a little bit counterintuitive. And even in like website design, where you think everything should be simple. But I've seen some sites and businesses that actually make the sales process, the checkout process, a little longer. So the, the theory behind that is because having you go through more steps gets you so invested that you don't want to back out. You've put so much time into it that you're more likely to go through with the purchase. So want to hear a secret? Uh-oh. So, went, ruh -roh. so whenever <laughs> <laughs> so whenever I have my check-a-date information, I always have them say, you know, what date are you looking for? What photo booth are you looking for? What features do you want? Do you want to add a limited printing? Do you want to add a memory book? What colors do you want to go with? They get through the end of that process. Then I ask them for their name, their email, and their phone number. People are more likely – that's the thing is they've already filled out this information. They're going to continue with those last three questions just because they don't want to go all the way back to the beginning versus if I would have asked them for their name, their email, or their phone number at the beginning of it, I would lose 20% of them right off the bat because, oh, shit, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah, it sounds counterintuitive, but it, it, counterintuitive, but it's, it's fascinating. It's true. I kind of like that tip. That's kind of fun. Yeah. I'm like subliminally screwing with people. <laughs> that's, that's a pro tip. So number seven is to make them feel special. I would love to do something specific to your group. You know what? We haven't started offering it yet. Ooh. That's my favorite thing. Yeah, absolutely. Sounds, sounds like a VIP exclusive type of that, thing. That is the reason why I don't have animated overlays on my website yet is because I want to string it up for just a little bit longer. Listen, we just got this new technology. What do you think? I'd love to do it for you. We haven't even done it yet. That's such a great thing. Like – most people would rush to put things on their site, right? Or or things that they don't even have yet. But there's some strategy in holding it back, right? You ha you can offer it, you can have it, and it feels more special by selectively giving it to people. Or maybe people that are not ready to book and be like, hey, you know what? There's something that we can do that we're not offering to everybody yet. I'll throw it in here if you book with us. It, it's just, it's the coolest thing. I mean, you know, it's not available yet. Everyone loves – Vegas has built a city on being exclusive and VIP. Yeah. I mean it makes people really feel like they're getting something that no one else is getting. It's like going through the back door, right? Instead of going through the front door like everybody else, you're getting something special. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, didn't I say it was hard to work with Ryan? Whatever. My mind's in the gutter. It's New York. I'm walking here. I'm walking over here. So number eight is stay up to speed. You want to be able to – this is, is – okay, stop, stop, stop. 
if you have a corporate client and you don't subscribe to their newsletter, follow their social media feeds, all that stuff, stop this podcast and go follow those people right now because that is one of the things that's going to set you apart. So I found out about one of my clients that they were moving into a very public space. I will announce this whenever it officially goes through. However, I knew about this from that particular venue and they had made an announcement that I had already knew what was kind of going on and happening. So whenever my client emails and wants, this is for a permanent installation, he goes, hey, listen, do you think we could do that? I was like, yeah, absolutely. Is it going to go, you know, down in this area? He's like, yeah, how'd you know that? Whenever you stay abreast on what is happening within people's companies, I just had a movie theater. Actually, I just found out from a friend. So I did the movie theater opening. I didn't know that they were opening up another location. I found out from my client, another client where she, oh yeah, they're moving in like, you know, a couple of streets over from us. And I talked to the, my client, whenever I went to the movie theater for our little, you know, grand opening, I said, oh, are you doing anything for this location? She's like, no, can you come back? We'd love to have you back again. Once you stay abreast with all this stuff, you are investing yourself in that client just a little more than anyone else would. You're treating them more than just a number on a spreadsheet. Yeah, absolutely. And it doesn't take much effort just to sign up to some newsletters and follow their social media accounts just to stay up to speed. And it's also something that a professional would do. And I think this is how you set yourself apart from other vendors that may not be taking this as seriously as you would be as a super boother. Um, it doesn't take a lot of effort, but their rewards uh, are great. This is, not, I mean, if you're scrolling, 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 scrolling on your phone, I mean, by no means do I like stalk these people all day long. You know, you just add them and you just scroll oh that's kind of cool keep scrolling keep scrolling oh wow they're doing that maybe i should email them in a couple days you know you're just kind of keeping up to speed with all the information and then whenever the opportunity presents itself you'll just be a little bit more knowledgeable number nine do you need anything more from me i so here's the thing i remember going to it was an ISIS meeting back then, but it's ILEA now. Um, this was easily 10 years ago. And the speaker came from, I believe it was North Carolina. And she, I will never forget this. Um, her flight ran late. Like everyone waited for her because she's like, you know, such an awesome rock star. Everyone wanted to hear what she said. She was talking about how her event company ran. She did um, a lot of decor, a lot of dance floors, a lot of rentals. Um, I believe she operated as a DMC as well. And she was saying how whenever she was sending proposals, this was also really important. Whenever she sent a proposal over $20,000, she wouldn't email it. She would FedEx it. She would put it in like this like nice like little folder. It had like all of her branding in it. It was stuffed with a whole bunch of crap they probably didn't need. But whenever you have a client that is spending that much money. This is just the same thing. You don't sign a $20,000 contract with a 10 cent pen. That's tweetable. Like that if you're going right to command there. this, that is, that is very tweetable. The very tweetable. This is, this is Ryan's little words of wisdom. Sterling's gold. So yeah. So this is the thing is if you are commanding that type of price point and granted in photo boost, we're not really going to send that. However, if you do get a big national brand and they're spending a shit ton of money with you, absolutely FedEx that crap. It sets you apart from everyone else. That's just, you know, going in an email. I would never ever send a hundred thousand dollar contract in an email. That's just amateur. Yeah. And this goes back to number seven, which is making them feel special, right? Sure. And if you're sending a hundred thousand dollar contract, you better be including something cute in there. I think this is a also about uh, the soft touch where it's it's a classy way of kind of following up. Do you need anything more from me? Uh, you're, you're not really putting any pressure on them for the purchasing decision. You're just asking them if they need anything more from you to make a decision. So this, this is the thing that she made a comment on is whenever you're going to send, you know, a regular proposal, say, I will get it to you tomorrow. I that was fine 10 years ago. It, I would absolutely throw that idea in the garbage now. This particular client in this day and age wants things done now. They, if I am, I if you tell me I'm going to wait a day for your proposal, screw you. I'm going to someone who can give me an answer on the spot. I mean, it, it is just a day, different day and age where you know the type of consumer is more knowledgeable and wants stuff now. Especially if I, there, I have had clients that are in meetings with their clients to say, I need this information now. Are you available? I am sitting right in front of them. And the fastest person to get to that is the winner. Yeah, and, I, and I've lost some clients because of a matter of minutes, like two minutes. Yep. So I don't know if... Uh, I don't get too like butthurt over those because those are just... Yeah. That's just insane. I was, was going to say, I don't know if any, everyone wants that kind of client, but... 
They do pay very this is, well. This happened to me on Sunday. I was booking a client. She requested information, sent out the proposal. Two minutes later, light turns green. And then she asked a whole bunch of questions. I was like, she asked me like, well, can I customize the, the, the strip? I was like, should you have asked this stuff like before you gave me money? But I mean, there's just different types of people that just work at a different speed. And I think that brings us to the final one, number 10. Has anything changed? Mm. So this is this is a good way to open the door to get your client to admit something that they probably wouldn't have admitted otherwise. So this kind of goes back to number nine a little bit. Whenever you're trying to find out who the decision maker is, and let's say that you're working with the school and there's a committee, well, the question that you need to ask is you've already found out that the committee is the decision maker as a whole. Is there anything that the committee needs from me to make a decision? Meaning... Is there anything else that I can give you that will make their decision-making easier on them? So going back to has anything changed, it gets your client to admit something that they probably wouldn't have told you anyways. So if something has changed, they probably weren't going to tell you. They were just going to wait until you go off into the wind. So if they say, oh, listen, you know, construction has been pushed back two weeks. We're not going to be able you know, to do anything for another month or so. At least you got that information to where you're not wasting your time on that client. Yeah, and, and I think people shouldn't get too stuck on the specific wording of these questions. Again, the main takeaway that I take away from these things is that it's a softer touch. It's, it's a way of like touching base without really putting pressure on either party. Um, so you can come up with different questions that serve that same goal. Um, but in, in, again, the overall takeaway of all this list is that you should absolutely be following up. If you're not following up, you're making a big mistake. And I, the way I think about it is I pay to acquire all of my inquiries. And even if you don't do paid advertising... Um, you, you're investing something to get people to come to you and request a quote. So you've paid for that person's email. You've paid for that inquiry. You better do everything you can to make sure you get... You're not wasting your money. Answer. Yeah. Either it's a yes or it's a no. And even if it's a no, I just want to know that they're not interested in booking with me so I can move on. I'm going to throw out those two stats from the beginning again to people. 44% of salespeople give up after just one follow-up. But 80% of sales require on average, five follow-ups. So to me, it's clear you should be following up. If you're not doing it, you're making a big mistake. So this is another thing I want to talk about email sequences. Um, There are a lot of booking softwares out there, Ismail's included, where you can schedule out emails to go out at particular given times. So the way how my email sequence previously worked was it would send out, you know, I do a 48-hour hold. I'm not, I have a higher volume. I'm not going to hold it you know, for longer than 48 hours. Some people may be, you know, 72, some people may be a week, whatever. Mine's 42. I send out that email and it has all their information and it says, no one can book this within 48 hours. So if you want it, it's yours. That one creates urgency to begin with. Um, I was just telling Ismail today that if it's like a slower month like this, I will do an additional incentive if someone books within 48 hours. So, and this is something that I guess, um, like, apartment complexes do is they will it's called a look and lease so they will give you all the information you need if you make a decision to sign a contract within 24 hours they will give you some sort of incentive so i will do the same whether it be a discount whether it be added value like a memory book or texting or whatever so something else that i do is i follow up the next day i say you know do you have any questions is there anything i can assist you with one of the words that I changed that I noticed an immediate increase in responses, I wrote hit reply, comma, do you have any questions? Whenever someone reads hit reply, they're going to want to hit reply. Like it's just going to be like a little instinct just to do it's that. Like Jedi mind trick a little. It really is. So it's like hit reply, you know, if you have any questions. Well, I do have a question. Click the button, and then you've already opened up that conversation with your client. So that's something that I learned that, and that I've only learned within the last two months, and that was just shocking to me. I was like, how in the hell do these little itty-bitty words make such a huge damn bit of difference? Yeah, and and like Ryan said, there's a lot of tools out there. You can automate a lot of this stuff. Um, Each tool has its own pros and cons, but you can definitely find something that works for you and automates a lot of this for you. Point being, you should be doing it though. You should absolutely be following up. So another thing that I do is I wait a day after that. And then the next day, if they have given me their phone number whenever they request pricing, I will text them on the third day. And I'll say, 
you know, this booth is still available. Do you have any questions? Then if they're not checking their email, they're checking their phone. And then if they decide to respond to me over text message, I can converse with them that way because that's apparently a way that they're comfortable in. And do you feel like, how do you balance, like, do you think that at some point someone might see that as too aggressive? Like you're intruding into their personal... You know, I've done that before. Um, actually, did I tell you about this? I don't think I did. So it was like, it was like three weeks ago. I was at an event. It was a fabulous event. We did, it was a very, very, very nice venue in Dallas. And the clients were so incredibly happy. I, I did. So I was using snap pick and I put the beautify filter, but I didn't tell anyone because that's my new favorite thing to do is to put a gorgeous filter on people and have them not know it. So they're in the photo booth taking pictures. They're like, why do I look so good? So the thing with that one is there was, a, a father um, of one of the groomsmen who was also getting married, and he came up to me. He was like, "Hey, are you available?" I said, "Yes, we are." You know, send me your information. I said, "Did you text a photo to yourself?" He said, "Yes, I did." I said, "Just reply to that text message, and that'll come to me." So the way I have that work is I have SnapPay connected to my Twilio, so that phone number that it, the text messages are coming from come from that number. So whenever he responds to it, I still get it. So he sends me an email or a text message. Literally at the end of the night, like at midnight, I'm getting the sex message. Hey, this is the date. Hey, this is the venue. And so I go in, I put the information into my system and I send him the 48 hour hold. And he goes, hold up there, cowboy. I love the aggression, but it's too fast. And I was like, I told him, you know, it's just a, a, our booking software. Like that's just what it does. Well, so the text message automation goes out to him the next day and he got pissed. <laughs> And then I got a, I got a text message back. Stop! I don't want to book it anymore. So I got a kick out of that because it was it was really funny how I guess my automation just bugged the shit out of them. Which you know that's fine and it, it's whatever. However, on the flip side of it, I had a client where we did a baby shower. And the mother came up to me and she was like, I have a gala this October. Can you do it? I said, yes. She get, put, gives me the information. I put it in the system. I said, you have the email in your system. And she goes – well, can I give you a credit card right now? I'm like, sure. So there are certain people that just want to book it quick and just be done with it. And there are some people that want to take their time and do whatever. So in retrospect, with that customer of the the dad, whenever I got that information, I should have waited until Monday. I think that I would have done I should have done business the way how his generation would have done business. Um, in retrospect, I wouldn't have put his cell phone number into my system because whenever the cell phone is in the system, it automatically goes out. So I that, <laughs> I really screwed up on that one. And uh, true, if he doesn't book it, I don't care. But you know, whatever. And, but but that that's also the downside a little bit to automation is that some people are just not accustomed to that depending on the demographic. Like if this was an older gentleman who said, slow down, cowboy, I can just picture. That's exactly uh, what he was. was. Another... Whatever is in your mind, that's exactly yeah. what he was. <laughs> yeah, so he may not appreciate the intruding in his personal space and following up too much. Um, and that's okay. Uh, no. y- you won't get 100% of everything. Um, but you want to do a system and optimize your business in a way that suits you and the clients that you want to attract. But I will say this. In my business model, he is the minority. I am not his vendor. I am his son's vendor. I'm not his. So that's that's the big difference in in how I guess we realize how we're booking these people. We don't necessarily know their age group. I will say this: if someone is asking me for a boomerang, I'm going to text them. That's just how it, that's just how it goes. I mean, there are more often than not. I mean, not to say that someone you know that's a little bit older doesn't know what a boomerang is. I'm just saying that those are buying signals that hey, this is a younger person. It sounds like this guy wasn't any demographic, so that's why you probably didn't mind too much. No, I don't care. I mean, you know, I, I it was it's kind of like found money. If he booked, great. If not, you know, oh well. But I hope this is helpful to people listening. I think we touched on a lot of important factors in regards to following up. The takeaway: follow up. Do whatever you got to do. Sign up to whatever tool you got to sign up for, and start implementing a follow up sequence. Um, and you, you'll actually the cool thing with my system is that when I send out these email follow ups to people. You see them reply to the follow-up, so you know that the follow-ups actually work. And I imagine it's the same with Ryan. It's actually not. Ooh. Your system's the only one that does that. And uh, there's people out there that have been asking me about my software. Um, I'm actually in process of rebuilding the tool and improving. 
No, 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 not rebuilding. We are starting from scratch. We have bought the land, knocked the building down, and putting in a skyscraper. Ismail is really underselling this. This system, I got to see previews of it last week, and I think did I get to pick what the landing, what the homepage looks like? I, I always ask you for your input, Ron. You have a you have a very important. But study. but but did you decide on that? Yes. Ah, perfect. So this, ah, I love it. So this, the, the, it is so sexy. I can't wait to start playing with this because I'm a geek for analytics and charts and graphs and all sorts of like sexy colors. And it's just, it makes booking sexy because yeah, making money is sexy. It, it is a huge undertaking. I'm still a couple months away, um, but I'll, I'll announce it when we get closer to it. I think that there's a lot of things that you learn from talking to other boothers and how we do business a little differently. And that, that's one thing that I found. I like to see whether my follow-ups actually worked. And they replied to that email, and I can tell when I'm replying back that this is due to a follow-up. So that's just one little neat nugget that we, we're offering. So my previous booking software, it would send out a link, and I would be able to see how many times they clicked that link just to see. Like if someone clicked it once and then never looked at it again for two weeks, you know, you know that they're not interested. But if they clicked on it 10 times in the last three days, that means that they're sending out to their friends and family and saying, hey, what do you think? And that's 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 a buying signal that people don't know yet. I just used – I just installed live chat on some of our um, – some of our – our websites and live chat does this thing that drift doesn't which is i'm sorry brad however whenever you're typing in like whenever like you type in like um whenever the customer types a response to you you can see what they're typing before they send it this is insane people we are living in the future <laughs> i was looking i know i was looking at so i have it installed on super boothers and if someone is looking at a particular page i can tell it to say hey listen you know if actually this is happening right now so if you're in new york and you go to superboothers.com right now it'll pop up with a little information thing that says hey are you coming to our event tomorrow yeah it's it's really cool and i think it, these tools all serve the same purpose of giving the business owner more information so if you know what page they're coming from or what location they're looking at you from, it gives you some information to work with. Um, so the more information you can give business owners through your tools, the better. It also Today, it also really helped me because I had a customer that I was talking with and she asked me about video messaging, like as in could I do like a video booth? And I said yes. However, the booth that she was requesting was – I mean it was iPad-based. We we're doing digital only and it was at a certain price point. I told her – I was like, yes, we can do video messaging. However, I need a separate room. You know, It needs to be a little bit quieter and it's also going to be a little bit more expensive than you know this little iPad booth that you're doing. And so I said, did I answer all of your questions? She said, yes, clicked out. On there, it gives them an exit survey, and it says, was your, was your question resolved? And she said, no. And so it said, were you happy with the service you received? And she said, yes. So I know that I'm doing my job making sure that she's taken care of. She wasn't happy with whatever our offering was or the cost associated with it. Um, so that kind of opened my eyes a little bit to realize, okay, now I can understand what these people are thinking a little bit more. No, we, live in, we definitely live in exciting times. Uh, the irony is that it becomes easier and easier to run a business, but harder and harder to succeed because there's more people doing it. But I hope this episode was uh, useful. Let us know what you think. Join the Facebook group if you're not in there already. Just search for Super Boothers on Facebook and let us know what you thought of this episode and let us know how you implement follow-ups and what you do. Thanks so much for joining me on my birthday episode of Super Boothers. If you're in the New York area, please join us tomorrow night for a night in Gotham. Tickets are still available until midnight tonight, so visit superboothers.com. If you want to read any of the books that Ismail talked about today, and you're like me and don't really want to read and just want to have someone read it to you, visit audibletrial.com slash superboothers for your free audiobook. And I'm going to be putting up a PDF of the information that we talked about today, so please check that out in the show notes. Thank you so, so much. We will see you next week.